Three Love Songs by Anya Pearson. Commissioned by Portland Center Stage, May 2020. An ode, a dirge, a lament, an operatic expression of quarantined life. To be performed as a counter to silence, for one or many voices, no formal singing required. But please, please do have the dance party. And please, please, please play a 90s classic and let me see a little cabbage patch or give me a little butterfly and record it and send it to me. Track one. A love song for survivors. What it's like at night. The night lingers. It is thick, like, like smoke, molasses, like a honey haze, humid. The silence is humid, thick and potent, daring you to call out into it. Will you answer its call? Does it mean you harm? Or is the silence an invitation? You find ways to ritualize sound, to make sound a counterattack to silence, to make sound an act of aggression against what lurks in the silence, to remind yourself that you have a voice. There are those of us who have been taught to fear the silence. There are those of us who have been taught to fear the sound of speaking. The sound of our own speaking voices. There is no proper way to explain this to someone who has always slept soundly. To lace a true knowing into words spoken to someone who has never been taught true fear. In some houses, children are taught that lack, fear, loss, less is their birthright. The same way some children are taught that privilege is theirs. There's no easy way to reply to why do you have trouble sleeping? Have you tried melatonin? Have you tried warm milk? Have you tried meditation? Have you tried lavender? Have you tried? 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 Words become nonsense. Language fails. It loses meaning. People steal its value by co-opting words, by co-opting culture, by falsifying true meanings, by cheapening words with their actions. Language fails because some atrocities are indescribable. They are born of blood, fascia, wounds, cruelty. They are born of bodies in relation to other bodies. Language is born of the mind. The way you say a word over and over until it becomes absurd. You in your sleep-deprived stillness paralysis. In the stooped shoulders, the skin stretched taut against a weary set of bones. The muscles seizing, leaping across your back in a concerto of pain. The tears you stream down your face. The blue tint of the screen. The show you are not watching. A plot you cannot follow the awkward filling of the silence with grasps at joy. A fleeting moment of joy passes by, a memory, a, a faint thought of the before. Laughing in the mania of not sleep, of exhaustion, excision, exhilaration, exaltation, at the word dubious. Uh, this is dubious. How if you say dubiously 10 times in a row, trying on a variety of voices to add sound and texture to the room, it alters the tonal vibrations of this room on this night and assaults the very silence that menaces you. Dubious. 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 
Dubious? Dubious? As if there are more people. As if when you hear an intruder, or you think you hear a strange sound that might be an intruder, you pretend to be armed, equipped for a fight, able to properly defend yourself against attack. So you call out and say, I have a bat, baseball, not animal. A knife, sharp, not butter. A blender, if it was the first thing that popped into your head. This is said dubiously, but what else can you do in that moment to defend yourself? So you're laughing maniacally. Does it become maniacal at any point? At the way dubious sounds, utterly ridiculous, when you actually break down the patchwork pieces of sound that together to produce the word dubious, and you decide to kill 30 minutes of the night in self-defense by researching the etymology of the word dubious, its birth story. Because this helps occupy your mind and eats ease a bit of the anxiety, and dubious deserves for its origin story to be sung aloud, shouted or repeated, until it becomes quite absurd, especially if done in an Irish Jamaican accent. This is all in service of the way we cope. The way we fight the night. To hatch it back and surgically remove the most dangerous parts of the silence. Though it should be noted, for those who do not understand in the fibers of their fascia, the silence is not in fact the core problem. It is a symptom, a secondary issue, a comorbidity, a coexisting disorder. The problem is what happens when we stop. when we are not frantically doing in avoidance of what lurks behind the silence, inside of the stillness, whether real or remembered, it is the contents of the silence that we fear the most. You are not alone. You're not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. Even in the darkest moments, when the silence is deafening and feels like a scream in your chest that will drag you forever. You are not alone. You are not alone. Even in the darkest of moments when the silence is deafening and feels like a scream in your chest that will drag you forever into the darkness. You are not alone. There is courage in the act of speech. Call out into the darkness. Survival is an act of bravery, of defiance, of grace in its purest form. Call out into the deafening silence. I can hear you from over here. In my silence. You are the light. Track two, a song for creatives. The terror of the blank page, the white space, the unknown. If like me, you are staring into the void of the page, your pending deadlines, your emails, waiting to be returned, your to-do list, your dirty house, your child's eyes waiting to be homeschooled, the day in general, and feeling paralysis, procrastination, panic, or the need to alliterate, come in. This is the place for you. You are feeling rudderless, a bug on its back who cannot turn over and get moving again. Maybe a larger, more terrifying creature is actually flicking you every time you figure out how to get back on your feet to see what will happen. Maybe that larger creature tries to trap you in a glass jar, to study you, to see what will happen if they will remove you from your natural habitat, not really considering how this makes you feel. Flailing, you cannot scurry away from the danger. 
drowning on the lack of structure, the terror of the unknown, the canceled contracts, the uncertainty of our livelihood, our futures, you come into. If you are an empath, enveloped by the empathetic impulse to grieve in a global sense for lost lives, for reason or communal sanity, come in. If you are raising children who have questions you cannot even answer for yourselves, if you are finding new ways to give of yourselves as a parent while also discovering how much you are in need of reparenting. Me too. Welcome. If you are a creative with children, just come in. Just come in and get some love. Get all the love you need. Being a creative and a parent is hard, y'all. We never get enough recognition. Creatives who also find time to parent their children come in and get celebrated. Parents who also find time to parent their creativity, you get celebrated too. There will be a massive celebration in your honor and childcare is free. What? If you're standing by the door, come on in. This place is magic, y'all. If your partner is watching news every minute of every day because that is how she, he, they cope and you cannot deal with another minute of the incompetence of the leadership, language breaks down, remember? People misuse words, lying to the people while people die and you cannot scream at them so you accidentally scream at your partner out of fear, out of frustration, out of panic or even out of hunger because you forgot to eat today because who has a schedule these days? You come in too. You can live by yourself and are experiencing loneliness that feels bone breaking. Come in. If you live with others and loneliness still feels physical in nature, uh, come in too. If you are choking on platitudes, if you are tired of hearing, we are all in this together, or things will go back to the way they were, or if you are afraid that this will come to be true, because while you realize there is no going back, you know those who monetize the status quo will try to force feed normalcy like a syrupy medicine no one actually needs. You come in too. If you are an essential worker, and you are out there risking your life and you see someone at the beach on the news and you privately have a violent thought, but as a good person, you just say it quietly to yourself. You come in too. I will say that thought out loud for you once you come inside. If you have lost anyone during this moment to anything, you come on in too. If you have lost anyone, and it still sneaks up on you accidentally or on purpose. When you hear a particular song or you smell a particular smell and you can call up their memory and suddenly you are suddenly in tears, you come in too. If you are forgetting the mechanism of breath and your nervous system is out of whack and you are awake until 4 a.m. binge watching shows and then sleeping all day, you come in too. If, if you are up all night binge watching and then your kids come wake you at 7 a.m., you come in too and take a nap. If what hurts the most is that you now realize how much you are unseen by those who you need most to see you, come in and be seen. If, if you cannot read books or plays or engage with the creativity that normally realigns the world for you or helps you cope or you find your place in it, if you cannot focus on anything for more than two seconds, five minutes, one hour, you come in too. We'll start a book circle. A conversation about all the books you've been meaning to read that you cannot, you just cannot right now. I cannot either. We won't together. If you are feeling hopeless, like a hole in your chest, because knowledge is as much a burden as a joy, 
when you really know what is going on, you must live with the hard truths of that knowledge. If you are feeling hopeless or enraged because you are a person of color and you are tired of having to explain why our lives should matter, or because this all could have been handled better so that people didn't have to die. Or because you are a survivor and you live each day waging war on silence and stillness and the night and this whole thing feels so fucking familiar. And yet the outcome is already assured. And sometimes you feel just a bit hollow where faith should rest. Because they are saying just vote for him anyway. He's our only option. And you are choking on the platitude and the malarkey of backwards thought. All y'all come into. This communal gathering is for those who need a space for being. A space for being, for dreaming, for surviving, for pausing. A space for breathing, for a collective breath, for a hug or two, ask for consent first. For the tears to come, if they need to. A place for remembering the mechanism of breath, if the tears won't come. Because that is okay too. Let's breathe together. Theater is a collective breath. A human breath. A human breath. Across difference, to see yourself and your story reflected in another. To meet someone who is different from you, but the same. Holding space for each other. The space for what we have lost in human connection. Holding space for others. Others who recognize always, always in the human condition the potential for story, for painting the world with stories. For those who have always believed in reinvention, that they could recreate themselves in stories, who believed in worlds they could birth in their minds on paper with a kiss of their mouth that allowed for a better presentation of the facts and circumstances of the world, who knew that retreat could be life-saving, who knew of the goosebumps caused by the arrangement of a sentence? Who cried, like legit cried, when Toni Morrison died? Or who can read the same book or play or poem 25 times because art can alter the composition of your soul or put it back into alignment when it has fallen out? For those whose life pieces often needed revision or more seasoning or endless rewrites or recasting or a complete rebranding even before social media was a thing. For the children who grew up watching TV, believing in TV families because they looked happy. Or the child who saw their first play and said, yes, this. Track three, a love song for difference. Normal is so overrated. For those of you who have heard, they don't know what to do with you. They don't know what to do with you and your work or how to define you. So they don't invite you. They don't get you. That's just the way theater is. Come back when you're more famous. 
it'll never change. You'll never change it. It's not mainstream enough. It's too black. It's not black enough. We already have a black show. Black people don't talk like this. It's too Asian. It's not Asian enough. We already have an Asian show. I don't think that Asian people talk like this. For those who cannot excel at social media, who are retreating into themselves because they're not able to replace human interactions with digital ones. If technology scares you and you think your phone knows too much, come in. Lean into the unknown space. Play with form. Breathe with me. Admit that the AI freaks you out. I'll go first. Step forward. Take space. Redefine that space in your own image. Breathe with me. Let's redefine the playing fields. Speak to those like you, like me, who are usually not invited. You lead this breath. Come in. This is our party. Come as you are. Do not apologize for the fullness of your humanity. Its complexity is its beauty. Come in. We've all been waiting. Together, we create the change. We unite. We repair the fissures. And then, we go out and fix what is truly broken in the world. The systems, the structures that have never truly worked. Those born of hate, fear, greed, which still seek to destroy beauty, diversity, love, and the freedom for us to have our individuality and uniqueness and still honor the universality of our humanity. Side note. If you were invited to the other parties, you know what I'm talking about. The ones with the cool kids, if you have always been invited, if you make the tables or the seating charts or own the buildings, hold the door open for other people. Don't just say you do, actually do it. You know the difference. Be what you say. Make language matter again. I am hopeful that a dance party will ensue. Let's get some 90s hip hop and R&B playing. I have a highly curated Bobby Brown Pandora station.